Hey guys, EVP Man here. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Ender 3 S1. Now, this printer has been upgraded and it's packed with features. And in my opinion, it's a solid buy. Now, we've owned several Ender 3s in our 3D printing journey. And just recently, we actually picked up a Ender 3 version 2 Pro, which we actually uh, gifted. And we had printed a skull that we had uh, for D&D &D that we had actually uh, shown on TikTok as well as on uh, Instagram. So we went ahead and reprinted it again, but this time on the Ender 3 S1. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love the overall quality of this printer. Check this out. Well, in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive. We're gonna check out the printer, we're gonna look at all the features, and yeah, we're gonna check out prints. So let's get right to it. Now, Creality has done a lot of upgrades to the Ender 3 series with this specific version. And there's a lot to really like about this printer. First of all, let's talk about the build plate. From a build plate perspective, you're looking at a 220 by 220 by 270 millimeter build surface. You also have, check this out, automatic bed leveling. And it's using their CR Touch technology with a metal uh, probe. And those of you who've been printing for a while know that sometimes that little plastic probe can get uh, broken or, or can get chipped. So having a metal probe to me is a great upgrade. It also has a PC spring uh, steel sheet, which every print from out of the box has stuck. No glue, no tape, nothing. It just works and it peels off and you're going to see how these first layers are turning out. In addition to that, you can expect that the nozzle can uh, be heated all the way up to 260C and the bed up to 100C. Now this is gonna give you a lot of flexibility when it comes to building materials. From a print speed, you could go anywhere from 60 all the way up to 150 millimeters per second. Now, one of the things that's new about this printer is that it has a brand new drive system. It's using the Sprite Direct Drive Extruder, right? And it's completely redesigned. It's direct drive, so you don't have to worry about some of the challenges that you have with Bowden tubes. Everything is just pretty solid with this. It's lightweight, and one of the cool things about this is that it's completely interchangeable with just a couple screws. This printer can also, if you choose, you can upgrade it to use a laser as well. Great upgrades. Now, you're also looking at a four millimeter print nozzle, which is pretty standard. You have ultra quiet printing, and you'll see this in our test, that it is incredibly quiet. The loudest thing about this printer is the fan. I'm sure they can make the fan a little bit quieter, but you're looking at around 48 decibels of noise. Now, given the new extruder, given the also the, the, the heating temperature that you can achieve with this, you're looking at PLA, ABS, TPU, and PETG. And I'm telling you, I've been printing some uh, TPU that is coming out absolutely fantastic. Little to no stringing and absolutely smooth prints. Now, you do have synchronized dual Z access, which is going to give you a lot of stability when you're doing your prints. And then also you have filament runout and also power recovery. Now, needless to say, you also have the ability to print either using a standard SD or a USB-C. So a lot of flexibility in this specific printer when it comes to overall print. It's, it looks totally different. So let's take a look at the prints and then we'll take a look at the printer. Now, the very first thing we're gonna take a look at is some of the sample prints that have already been pre-sliced and were actually on the SD. And as we take a look at them, uh, what you'll find is that it does have a handle that you can print out, and you can see this is the ender handle. I haven't removed the supports, I just wanted to uh, show you what the print quality was. And you can see that this is pretty clean, right? All of these prints are using the standard setting, so I have done no tweaking. Really, for me, when I grab a printer, what tells me if it's a good printer is if I can immediately, on putting it together and powering on, I wanna be able to print. And if I can do that without making any adjustments, then this is a solid printer. And I have to say, this printer only has around six parts to connect. So my previous Ender, it was like an assembly. You know, it, it took a long time. This one, super fast to print. It took me no more than 10 minutes. And it's not because we've done other printers before, but there's very little parts to put together. And as soon as we popped it up, we uh, did the bed leveling, which was super fast. I, and then it basically started printing and we printed every single print without failure. So this one right here that you see again is our Ender. Uh, it was a, it's an Ender handle that is on there. We have this uh, Bitcoin, right? And you can see uh, the overall quality here is pretty, pretty spectacular. You have no, really no defects that I can see. Now, as we take a closer look at the coin, you'll notice that very little when it comes to layer lines. And again, we're using the standard settings. Uh, so things look really good here. We have a little cat that they have as well, and you can look at how great this quality is as well. Really, really nice. No stringing whatsoever. And again, we're using all the standard settings, so I didn't tweak anything at all. Over here we have this little rabbit that we printed, right? 
These are all small prints. And then if we flip these over, I just want you to see the, the first layer. Look how clean that first layer is, right? And you all know that uh, if you've been 3D printing before, the first layer is the most important layer. And you can see how clean those layers are. And I'm gonna show you some others uh, so you can see the layer lines or the first layer, how, how clean that is. So all these came out really, really nice. Now, we did some other things. Uh, I'm gonna show you, we, this is a Christmas tree that we pulled off of Thingiverse, right? So let's move these around for a second. And this was uh, printed with a silk red PLA. Again, standard settings, nothing special going on here, no tweaking. Let's look at that first layer. Look at how clean that first layer is. Really, really nice first layer. And then the, the tree itself came out so nice. It says around a 15% infill. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous, right? So nice looking tree. And then the other thing we did is we <clears throat> printed another silk PLA print. Um, and this is um, a D&D tower. So we'll move this over to the side so we can keep this in focus. And great, great print. You can see the overall quality. You can see what that looks like right there. And uh, you'll notice again, first layer line, or the first layer, look at that. Solid first layer. And this had no supports, right? It works. Really, really clean print. Couldn't be happier with this. Now, what we then did is uh, we did do some TPU. So this is uh, our TPU calibration cube, and you can see here the overall quality of this, right? Again, no tweaking whatsoever. This is out of the box. And again, you know, pretty excited. It, it's, I deal with a lot of 3D printers that I test. Some of them don't even make it to the to, to video because of quality issues. And so far, I have to say that this one, um, and I have another one that we're going to be uh, showing in the channel very shortly from Creality that was just released, that the quality is just spot on. These things work. And you can see just how everything looks um, right there. Now, we did do some more TPU, right? So this is TPU. Uh, we did this wheel, this tractor wheel. Uh, this printed, no stringing, okay? Standard settings, Cura Slicer, using stock. Look how clean this is. Check that out. Right? And this is standard TPU. This is not the flexible PLA that we've looked at on the channel before, right? Um, maybe some artifacts right here, some very little stringing. But this printed flawlessly for the first print. And uh, again, we're talking about uh, not even an enclosure, right? This is in a room that is, the temperature is um, a little bit on the colder side. So I was really, really impressed with the overall print. Now, there's another thing that we did is we did a case. Um, and this is a case for the Samsung Galaxy uh, I would say flip or actually fold three. And this is TPU, right? And what I wanted you to see is the overall quality of this. Again, no supports whatsoever. It fits really, really well. Um, it has the little slot here for the S Pen where you can actually put the S Pen holder here on the side, no supports. And the only thing I would say is because of the PC sheet, the way, you know, it does have some grit to it. Um, you know, maybe uh, if you put in another, uh, I would say sheet, something that has a smoother surface, this would have a better look. Um, it doesn't look the best because of the actual print service itself. So I would I would look at changing that. I'm actually ordering one that I can see that I can swap it for. So this is what the, the actual TPU is like. And again, standard settings. Now this last uh, print is a Wexter print and this is a Krampus. Uh, and uh, this was something that I cut out. I thought it was actually a support and it actually wasn't. It was uh, one of those little uh, Christmas balls that you see um, on his clothes, like this one right here. So that was my bad. Not a defect at all. This one did have supports. I had supports all the way around it, supporting the face, the nose, and then also the horns. But take a look at that. That looks great, right? Look at the quality there. Uh, this has probably about a 10% infill. Uh, look at the first layer. It's just solid. So overall, guys, you know, if you're looking to get another Ender 3, and let's face it, if you have one, you want to have two. And if you have two, you want to have three. Uh, definitely, it's the printer to get. If you're getting into 3D printing and this is your first time and you're looking for a printer that's going to work out of the box, it works out of the box. Worry-free. Uh, the bed leveling works. It has 16 points of leveling. So that works as well. Overall, our experience has been super duper solid. And I got to tell you that uh, I run into a lot of printers that aren't. So. Overall print quality is spot on, it's quiet, it's fast, but let's take a closer look at the printer. Now as you take a look at the front of the printer, you're going to notice immediately that brand new direct dual gear extruder. Now it runs quiet, has that CR touch automatic bed leveling with the 
metal uh, probe, which gives it a lot of durability. And you'll see in a couple of seconds how this printer runs really, really quiet. And that's due to that 32-bit silent mainboard. Now, you'll also notice on the left-hand side that it does have two inputs when it comes to prints. You can print either via the SD card or the USB-C. Now, also, it has that drawer that I just pulled out on the side that allows you to store all of the, I would say, tools, right? But I found that they're not really necessary because you'll notice in both areas, you have knob tensioning. So you don't really have to break out a Allen key to adjust the belt. All you do is you turn those knobs to give it the right adjustment. And that is a great feature as well. Uh, the printer, as we mentioned, does feature that filament brake sensor as well as the uh, filament runout sensor. So you have great protection when you're running long prints. Now, the screen is also legible, easy to read, and unfortunately, it's not touch, but you know what? We're used to the dial feature. So let's take a closer look. Now, you'll notice that the interface is really simple. Basically, you have your print menu. You could go into prepare, and in the prepare area, you're going to be able to do your auto home, preheat for PLA. Um, you're also going to do your Z offset, and that's what I have mine set at. After the bed leveling, that's all I did is I made sure that I had some good tension with a sheet of paper and set my Z offset. Nothing else was required. Uh, you do have your control area, and this is where you're going to see your temperature, motion. Uh, one of the things that anytime you do that Z adjustment, you want to make sure that you store that configuration as I did here. And um, then you have obviously your temperature settings. Bed leveling, you can go into this area, and then it's going to be that 16-point bed leveling going all the way across. Now, our experience with the Ender 3 has been really positive. As you can see here, uh, with every startup, it's going to just do the probe test, make sure that the leveling is um, as calibrated previously, and then you'll go through the actual um, initial print. We've been really happy with the actual adhesion uh, on this specific service. Uh, everything sticks well. Sometimes it could stick too well, as you can see. But all in all, everything works uh, fantastic with this printer. Now, we're printing some TPU, and we're right now printing this at 223 uh, from the nozzle and then 60 uh, the bed. And you can see how, how great that first layer line is. You know, you can see how it's printing without any issues. And it is relatively quiet. I'm going to stay quiet for a second. That's not bad, right? So guys, that wraps up our review of the Enda 3 S1. Uh, very excited about this printer. Great quality. Uh, definitely, it's the printer to buy if you're looking for a printer that is worry-free and just works out of the box. And everything is new. It has all this new tech in it. So make sure you check it out.